Dust storms can be pretty amazing when you see them from space. And sometimes they're huge. You know, I had seen little dust storms blowing and you kind of look hard. This, you didn't need to look hard. It was a continent of Northern Africa, basically obscured by thick brown dust. And as I orbited, I couldn't wait to come back. And when I did, I saw that dust storm that was over Africa, now over the Atlantic Ocean. In my next orbit, I see it hitting the coast of South America. Every year, about 27 million tons of that African dust we can see from orbit drops out of the sky into the Amazon basin. And it turns out it's the perfect fertilizer. As they grow, the plants and the trees turn carbon dioxide into oxygen. One single tree can produce enough oxygen to support two people. And the Amazon rainforest is 10 times the size of Texas producing 20 times more oxygen than all the people on the surface of the Earth could consume. But not one breath of it leaves the Amazon. There are so many animals living in the Amazon basin that the life there uses all that oxygen up. For all these years, I've been thinking the rainforest is the lungs of the planet. Now, sure, it makes a lot of oxygen, but it uses it all. The rainforest does help us breathe, but not because of air. There's a river in the Amazon. No, not that one. There's another river, a river in the sky. For the most part, I know this world from standing on its surface. I mean, I've been up to the top of the Empire State Building and uh, put my quarter in the scope. And I've even jumped out of planes a couple times. But that's nothing. The International Space Station clocks in at one million feet. Whenever there's a free moment on the spaceship, we try and get to the window to take pictures. And during my three space flights, I took about 45,000 photographs. And some parts of the world are easy to take pictures of, like the outback of Australia. It's always a sunny day there. But there are parts of the world that you almost never get a good picture of one of those is the Amazon Basin. So it makes you think, what's going on down there?
for the last 10 years, Rosa has been working in the Amazon, uncovering the surprising way the rainforest helps the whole planet breathe. Nós estamos introduzindo instrumentos de medição muito sensíveis e instalando em algo muito especial. She's not kidding about special. This is the tallest structure in all South America. Rosa has tried to climb this tower twice before, but she's never made it to the top. Da primeira vez, teve uma tempestade, e daí eu tive de voltar. E da segunda vez, as minhas pernas não aguentaram. <risos> Dessa vez, eu estou determinada a conseguir. Now that's a pretty cool climb, but something else is rising too. If you could look inside the trees, you'd see water sucked up from the forest floor. When the water hits the top, the combination of sun and wind turns it into a mighty river, a flying river. Com essa torre agora, podemos medir a real dimensão desse rio voador. Se fosse um rio normal, Esse seria o maior rio do planeta. Ainda maior que o rio Amazonas que está ali. This river of cloud flows across South America, obscuring everything beneath it. 